Okay, so we're going to have a look at these uh, this muscle structure and look at the muscle fibers, um, which are really a collection of muscle cells. And within each muscle cell, on the outside, we've got the uh, the nuclei, these little lumpy jobbies, and then on the inside, or at, at the really small level, that make them up are the myofibrils. So there they are there. Now in each myofibril we've got those filaments. Now one way that they describe skeletal muscle is with these bands. So the Z bands between the two Z bands, these thin bands, is one sarcomere. Okay? And you can see that when a sarcomere contracts the Z bands would get closer together. Um, now also in the middle is an H zone okay now this is an H zone is actually where the uh, there's only myosin alright so you've got your actin filaments as you can see there myosin in the middle and the H zone is that bit in the middle where there's no actin and myosin uh, being crossed over Z bands obviously at the end here and then there's a whole lot of other bands that they refer to but uh, we won't really worry about those at all because they're, they're really for people at a at a very detailed level. So the H zone is interesting though because it disappears. So you can see here the Z bands will get closer together and the H zone in the middle disappears and that happens because the actin and the myosin are getting pulled together and what's actually happening is the actin's getting pulled by the myosin. So those little myosin heads will be pulling the actin along. So let's actually have a squizzy at that down at the molecular level. And here we go. This is actin and myosin sliding across each other. This is our actin and in the middle there we've got our myosin. And when we have a closer look, the Z bands again, H zone in the middle. So you can see why you get these different, you know, the darker segments of uh, a muscle. Because sometimes there's just one filament and other times there's several filaments overlaying each other. So here is how the filaments get pulled together. You can see here these little myosin heads ratcheting their way along the actin. Or pulling the actin along actually. Now this is a great picture. Have a look at that. So you've got the myosin heads pulling the actin along. Looks like they're nibbling away at it really doesn't it? So let's have a look at actually what happens to get one of these uh, little myosin heads linking up first of all. We've got the uh, the myosin head sitting there and we've got ATP that's on it and that's been broken down to ADP and PI or ADP and P and then when that phosphagen's released off the head there's energy released and that's that energy is used to do the power stroke pull that actin along so it's attached there that phosphagen disappears releases the energy with it and that myosin head pulls the actin along so let's just talk through one of these cycles ATP's there broken down to ADP and P and connects when that phosphate's released releases energy and that gets pulled along so attach release the energy power stroke ATP comes back in and away we go.